today, this whole month, we have been dealing with faith. We understand from scriptures without faith, it is impossible to please God. You've been told about the word of faith. It's been explained to you the spirit of faith. The spirit is something that we don't see. I saw that in me. We don't see the spirit, but it drives what we do. So, if you don't mind this morning, there is a word from God, and it can only be downloaded if your spirit is awake. So, I ask you to put your right hand on your head. I want you to say this little prayer with me. Put your right hand on your head and say, Lord, baptize me afresh with the spirit of faith that when I live here I don't live the same way I came but I live empowered by what I have heard through the spirit thank you Lord for hearing me thank you Lord for answering me in Jesus name give God a hand clap of praise for I have received of the Lord which I will also deliver unto you for it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. I didn't tell you to sit down. I didn't tell you to sit down. I know what I'm doing, I think. Amen. You sit down after the scriptures I read. Would you put up uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7? Amen. Verse 7. <laughs> King James Version 7. We'll come back to this in a little while. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now you may sit down. The Bible records things that God has promised us. Some things we have experienced, some things we are yet to experience. In the scripture here, it talks about, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith without works is dead. Without faith, we can't please God. Yet, we need our five senses to survive on this earth. There's a heavenly system. There's an earthly system. We are under a sealed order from heaven. Our instructions are heavenly. Uh, they are only downloadable by the Spirit. Uh, the Bible records that physical exercise profits little. But godliness profits everything. The Bible says if we are unstable in our faith, we can't receive anything from God. That's James 1. Now, the Apostle Paul records here in the second, the second epistle to the church at Corinth that for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet if I close my eyes, I will fall. So since we are spirit beings in a body, <laughs> On our way back to heaven, trying to help someone this day, we are a spirit being that God knew before he put us in the body. And then he sent us into the world to serve him. Mm -hmm. 
So without his instructions, we don't know what to do per time. The instructions are spiritual, not carnal. So let me, let me, let me break this down for you. Who is we? Aha. God's people who believe in his son that died on the cross for all of us. That's us. So we are called Christians. Now in Numbers chapter 6, you hear me say this in benediction sometimes. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. Now, the last of the verses says, may he put his name on you. Hmm. Now, now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, he said, if my people who are called by my name. So, who are those people? The one he put his name in. That's you and I. So, if we say, we walk by faith, it is those of us that believe. So what is this walk about? Where are we walking to? Aha. Uh -huh. It's not physical exercise. It is our daily living according to the precepts and concepts of God. We walk by the instructions that comes from heaven. Hmm. So what is the faith about? Believing God and trusting him and moving when he says to move. Why not sight? Sight means I trust what I see. The Bible says, to him that believeth, let me stop there. The doctor guesses at your disease. <laughs> the doctor will tell you, you have this. But yet, Matthew 8, 17 tells me that he took my infirmities and my diseases. Now, now, in Isaiah 53, he says, whose report shall we receive? The one God said that Jesus took my infirmities, or do I believe the doctor? Now, the doctor is not lying to you, but it's not the truth. <laughs> There's a difference between facts and truth. I'm not going to go wrong. Let me not go there this morning so I can finish this. So, my sight is me following what I think. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Lean not on your what? But in all that ways do what? And what will happen? He will direct my path. My path, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, My plans for you are good and not evil. He has the plans, but the plans are for me. Since he has the plans, my instruction. Now, now we go to school. To walk by faith, what does that look like practically? Number one, I'm not going to keep you long. Number one. You must have the fear of the Lord. If you don't have the fear of the Lord, you do anything. <laughs> if you do not have the fear of the Lord, you could steal, kill, and destroy. Sound familiar? So the fear of the Lord in Proverbs 18, 13. 8, 13, I'm sorry. Proverbs 8, 13. He said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. I did write it. Is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. You didn't know cursing could be a problem, did you? I tell you often, your language, Bible says, <laughs> let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. 
Ephesians 4. What does that mean? The same mouth you want to say bless you, the same mouth you use to say do something else to them. The Bible says it ought not to be so. Do you know that every word that comes out of your mouth counts against you? You didn't know that, did you? That's not today's lesson. Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10, 28. Fear of the Lord. And fear not them. We kill the body. But are not able to kill the soul. What do we serve in the church? Do we serve bodies or souls? Are you in church or somewhere else? What do we serve in church? We serve souls, right? It didn't say anything about beautiful person or tall or short person. Say souls. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. The body is a temporary housing for your spirit. It really belongs in heaven with the heavenly father and Jesus. So, fear of the Lord is number one. If you have, must walk by faith. Number two, you must obey the word. Okay? We have a couple of teachers in the audience. I said it last week, I said it a week, week before. We all sit in the classroom, information is passed out. What you hear is information. What you understand, you believe. What you believe builds your faith. But the instruction that is given that you obey gets you an A. Mm -hmm. The one you disregard, you fail. We all have filters on how we hear. Because the flesh is pleasure seeking, pain avoiding. So when he says, thou shalt not get drunk, but I like my vodka too much. So I imbibe a little bit. Now I'm no longer coherent. I'm not picking on drinking, but hear me. The Holy Spirit is from God. The battle spirit is from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They both take control of you, except the other one makes you do things you ought not to do. Makes you say things you ought not to say. So obedience in Luke eleven twenty eight. Let me hurry up. He said, but he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and do what? Keep it. How do you keep anything? He says, two, take two steps, turn right. But I don't feel like taking two steps. I feel like taking ten. I have missed the mark. So I should not expect the result of two steps and make a right. You want to walk by faith? You do it as per the instruction. Now, the Bible says in Acts 5.29, Peter and other apostles, they have all this trouble where they are. People say you ought to do this way, you ought to do this. Peter says we ought to obey God, not man. Can I tell you this? It matters not who the government is. They will have policies that will go against God because they claim there is separation between church and state. Hear me. The laws of the state they took from the Bible. Oh, you don't hear me. Why would you go to court and they have you place your hand on the Bible, but yet they tell you there is separation? Let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. What they are administering came from the Bible. But the devil got involved. Now we have separation of state and the church. So we don't do what the church says. But those of us who are in the church, who should we be listening to? Who is the blesser in our lives? Like they sang this morning. Who is the healer in our lives? Now, if you want to drive my car, you got to be extra nice to me. Because it's my car. I'm paying for it. But if your character to me is a little questionable, I'm not sure you could drive my car. I don't care how, how old your license is. It's my car. Y'all don't hear me this morning. Obedience is important to get to where we need to get to with God. 
Number three, righteous living. <laughs> Choose righteous living. It's a choice. It's a choice on how I talk, how I deal with people, the things I say to them, how I act when I don't have my way. You must choose righteous living. James 1, 19 and 20. Even you're a little slow in the school this morning. James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Now look at 19. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. You know, I was raised outside this country where respect is ultimate. But sometimes, even in that culture, we get hung up on the wrong thing. They didn't say good morning to me the proper way, so I'm now mad because they disrespected me. So I'm still mad when something else is going on that God is doing in my life. Let me digress and tell you a story. About a man and his wife. They go to the French Alps. I don't think Dr. Branch has been there yet. He's everywhere. But they go on vacation in the French Alps and they take a bus that takes them through the scenic route. And they see all the beautiful scenery. The husband died. So the wife was grieving for the husband for three years. And Nebo says, why don't you go on that vacation? He will help you. So she did. When she got there, their regular seat was sold to somebody else. But she got a seat anyhow. But while on the bus, she's complaining about who's obstructing her. It's not how it used to be. And this is not right. This one is too slow. This one is smelling and complaining. By the time she got finished complaining, she didn't see a thing. The trip was over. She had to get off the bus. Colossians 3, 5. He said, modify therefore your members which are upon the earth. My hands is upon the earth. My legs are. My eyes, all this is upon the earth. He said, modify. What does modification mean? Destroy. Disregard. Fornication. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. Evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. Anything that you do that avails itself against the word of God, avoid it. Sin is very enjoyable, but it costs too much. Sin is very enjoyable. You know, if I gave you a meal, you will eat it, you will enjoy it. But if I left it where you could steal it, it tastes better when you steal it. In Romans 1, verse 16, this is righteous living I'm still talking about. Uh, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes to the Jew first and then the Greek. For therein, listen now, listen. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from where? From faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by their faith. So my faith is my responsibility. Everyone look up here. Look up here. Everyone God made, he put a measure of faith in. You cannot receive anything from God except you use your faith. The amount you get from God depending on how much you have grown your faith. Let me completely digress here. I was watching a natural, a nature show. A big elephant in a family 
they were traveling and it was dry season, no food. The big elephants can eat twigs. The kids can. Now, because the big elephants had no greenery to eat, they were eating twigs, the milk was dry. Because the milk was dry and the kid couldn't suck, the kid was dying. The kid needed to eat for her own life. Y'all don't hear me. Your faith is your responsibility. Nobody ever eats for anybody else. Nobody will believe for you. If you don't believe, you don't have. So this thing, he said, look, my faith in God that I have grown qualifies me to ask for things I need per time, and I will have it. Next one is trust in God in every circumstance. So it's okay to tell people you have faith. I go to church, I'm a member of so 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 and so. But little things you're running around asking for people for help. Hmm. You all hear me say we have help, right? Brother Branch, how many calls did I make to you before you came to visit the first time? Okay, he's thinking. That means he, I didn't call him. Here's what I'm telling you. God will send you help if you believe in him. Now, now, the things that happen to us, Jeremiah 29, 11 said, my plans for you are good. His plans for you. Man, I wish you could hear this. His plans for you are good and not evil. How do I walk in his plan? How do I let him to do his plan on me? If I keep doing what I want to do, not what he wants to do. The Bible records here, hmm, number four, trust God in every circumstance. Hear this, hear this. Malachi 3.6 says this. For I am the Lord. I change not. Why? So you children of Jacob do not, don't get consumed. Now, Jesus, in Matthew 26, I believe it's around verse 39, it was time for him to go to the cross. He went and took some of his disciples. I said, y'all watch with me while I go yonder and pray. Now he said, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. First thing we want to do is avoid pain. Pain has a purpose in everyone's life. Oh. God does not grow our faith by flattering us. He challenges us at our faith so we could come a little higher. I'm not sure if I'm in the right church today. <laughs> when you go to the gym, any muscle you want to train must be ripped. And it's going to hurt the next day if you rip it right. <laughs> the fibers of the muscle get turned to shreds every time you exceed where you were before. The reason why it hurts is that the next day they're trying to reconnect stronger than they were before you rip them. So your faith works the same way. The Bible records in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, it said, forget the former things. Forget your successes. Forget your failure. He said, I'm about to do a new thing. Can you perceive it? So what is he saying? Well, I lifted 200 pounds yesterday. I need to go to 300. Well, get ready. There's going to be some pain. Our faith is required to grow so we can walk by faith, not by sight. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. I already read you that. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. How much of your heart? And lean not unto what? So I have an understanding. Okay, here's another digression. Same thing I said before, I'm going to say it again. What you hear is information. What you understand, you believe. So the more I understand my spiritual position, the more my faith grows, secret. The more I understand what God's plans are for me and for the challenges that are set before me, the more my faith grows. Here's the other part of it. The fear of the thing that I've been running from, when I have a little bit of information and I understand it, the fear disappears. Darkness envelops the place until light shows up. Soon as light shows up, darkness, I'm done. I'm out. No negotiation, no struggle. Same thing with information about your spiritual life. If you will seek for what God has said about that situation, the fear of that thing will disappear. No effort, no prayer. Believe in God's reward system. There is a reward system, you know. Because we do what we want to do, we never see the reward. Because the world is doing everything. We don't, we can't use the world as a testimony. Y'all don't hear me. In Hebrews 11, 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder, rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, 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 look at this. In Hebrews 13, 8, he said, Jesus Christ is the same when? So, if I believe in the reward system, I will do just what he says to do. So, how do I walk by faith? Number one, we already went through that, the fear of the Lord. If you don't fear God, you will do anything. Number two, you have to obey the word. Number three, you have to choose righteous living. Number four, you must trust God in every circumstance. Number five, believe in God's reward system. Amen. Now listen. Your faith. The Bible says in Romans 12, 3, that don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. But that God has given everyone the measure of faith. The measure of faith. That means the faith that is in me is enough to believe God. To start with. But it's my responsibility to eat. To grow my faith. We eat to grow physically. Sometimes we overeat. In spirituality, there's no overeating. Mm -hmm. For every challenge I have, there's some food in the Bible for me. Hear me as I close. Whatever issue there are under the sun, the answer is in the book. Let me prove it to you. The Bible says in the beginning, was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. In Colossians 1.16, it says, For everything that was made was made by him, through him, and for him. So that means there is nothing visible or invisible that is not contained in the world. There is nothing under the sun, visible and invisible, that is not produced by the word. So if I need an answer for Satan, I need to find it in the word that created him. Walking by faith requires that whatever problems I have, the answer is in the scriptures. 
me share a couple of testimonies, then I'll sit down, I'm beginning to sweat. That's more like work now. <laughs> In December, well, you all know how we came about this sanctuary, right? I was minding my business. In my driveway, changing light bulbs, and the man came and said, I got a church for you. We're here. Believe God for what you need. In December, I had to go home and see my mother. I didn't have enough money to go to Nigeria. Somebody bought me a ticket. Didn't ask. They bought me a ticket. I went with limited money. When I got to Nigeria, <laughs> I was put up in a luxury hotel. I didn't have to pay a dime. Didn't tell anybody anything. Somebody saw me and said, where are you staying? I said, over there. No, I don't like it. I need you to stay here. Now, listen now. I'm in the capital city where my mom is is eight hours away. Now, I had some things to do in the city where I was, so the little money I had was... When I got home to the village, it's not on your way to anywhere else. <laughs> I was home for eight days. Now, if you've never been, understand this. You have to buy fuel for generator if you want electricity, because it's not there all the time. So I had to buy fuel every day for eight days. I didn't have money to buy for one day. But until I left the village, the generator was on. Two of them were on. I left home with money in my pocket. But I didn't have to ask anybody for any money. And it wasn't magic either. <laughs> Here's what I'm telling you. When I was in the main city, I said, Lord, don't let me borrow. And I believed him because he sent me home. I didn't buy the ticket. He bought it. So while I was home, there was money put in this hand. One day I had so much money in this pocket and in this pocket. My brother said, won't you put those down? No, 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 I want in on my, on my body because I want to remember what God is doing. If you will walk by faith, according to the precepts and what God has said in his word, he will bless you. Give God some faith. The problem is we, sometimes we reason what he said. We reason, well, She's looking at me funny. If I raise my hand, she's going to talk about me. She has no heaven or hell to put you in. She's not even in obedience. You're trying to be in obedience, but you're looking at her or him. So what are the things that we must do to walk by faith? One only. Only one requirement. You must be born again. If you're not born again, you can't hear the voice of the Spirit. We're going to deal with that next month. The voice of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now the Old Testament was God. New Testament was Jesus. Jesus is God now. He left us with the Holy Spirit. So if we don't listen to the Holy Spirit, we're struggling. We can't walk by faith. We cannot walk by faith. Amen. Give God some praise. So is there anyone here who does not know Christ? Please stay where you are who has been with Christ, but somehow they've disconnected. You just need prayer, and you'll be reconnected back to Jesus. That's all we need. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, we'll pray for you, you are reconnected. Uh, next month, we're going to baptize your daughter, Adeline. I think we've been long enough. This is also our third Sunday. It is the anointing service. So listen carefully. The anointing oil was a prescription or is a prescription from God. In Exodus 30, read it for yourself. Now, that was the Old Testament. In the same Old Testament, God said, I will use this instrument of anointing oil to break yokes. And he has proven it in my life over and over again. Now, Jesus came in the New Testament and sent his disciples out and gave them the same oil. He said, raise the dead with this oil and heal the sick. And they did. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, it is called the oil of consecration. Kings are enthroned by the anointing. 
pastors are installed in their office with the same anointing. Dead people have been raised by the same anointing. The spirit of faith has been impacted on people by the same anointing. There are revelations that has come out of the anointing. Here's your challenge today. Right where you're seated, rise to your feet. I'm not sure any of this that I've shared with you that you need. The Bible says in Revelation 3.20, the day you hear my voice, or not your heart. So what does this mean? Someone please get this. Don't miss this. That challenge that I can't find an answer to. Is it possible that it's in the anointing oil? Lord, if it is, show me this thing. As this oil comes upon my head, I want proof that I have been delivered. Remember faith? It's an individual thing. You can't live by my faith. You live by your faith. So if you don't believe, nothing is going to happen. Trust me on this one. Nothing will happen. Let me run my mouth for a second. Last week, Monday, I couldn't keep the handkerchief because they were wet within an hour. I'm blowing, I'm coughing, I'm doing all this stuff. Well, it takes eight days to do this. No, not me. I give it three days. Tell you what I did. Because I believe in the efficacy of the communion. Two days ago, I walked, got up, I said, this is the last day I'm using tissue. And when I got my communion and my blood and I took it, went to bed, got up, nose is still dry. Faith. Your faith. People think until you get <laughs> unleavened bread and get the juice before it will work. Nah. -uh. In Luke 24, 30 and 31, Jesus took what the disciples were eating and blessed it and gave it to them. They ate it, he opened their eyes. Faith. Faith means if I believe in the word of God and the power of God, anything will work in my hand. Y'all are not clapping. I'm not saying my own hand, your own hand. What is the size of your faith? Are you looking to grow your faith? Or are you just everyday Christian? You're just doing what they do. I went to church today. I fulfilled all righteousness. I went to church. I even clapped. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where is your faith? So grow your faith. The door of the church is open for the acceptance of members. My letter. Do you have Christian experience or you are a candidate for baptism?